bitch! 79, I only got one more! You... You need that. Alright! Did I get 25,000 lever again? Yeah, I did. Alright, sweet. That is a shit ton of money, and I will absolutely take it. It's my song again! Da, 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 da. Hello? Recover valuable sections of the Encyclopedia Diderot that might exp- Oh, shit. Do you have Hi. a copy of the Encyclopedia Diderot? Well, good god. Yes, I believe I do. <laughs> Put some soap in your mouth for that I'm one. to borrow a section of it, one focusing on secret societies. Give me a moment to... Steve! Stop him! Oh, shit. Oh, what? Really? He was all the way out here. Why am I chasing this guy? I'm sure I'll find out soon enough. Chase him down! Wow, he runs fast and shit heavy dude. Light on your feet, sir! Out of the way! Like an upstanding citizen. Stop running so fast! Good God! This guy's like a bullet! Am I not supposed to catch him? Probably not. Get the fuck out of my way. I no time for you. I was so close to him and he's sprinting like- Oh, I'm trying! God! I'm gonna shoot you right in the spine. Just, I think he's running around in a circle. Damn. Lost him. No, I didn't! I did? Was that supposed to happen? Probably. He just led me around in a circle and then disappeared. Well, that sucks. I didn't feel like I wasn't supposed to catch him. Well, now that I'm not chasing somebody, let me go ahead and refill. Oh, wow! I didn't lose him. He's right here. I really am just chasing this guy. Okay, well, now that I know you're around. Damn. SHUT UP! Approach from the direction he's coming from. Get off that. Where is this little fucker? There you are, you prick! COME HERE! AHA! MY STRATEGY WORKED! Fuck you, dude! What the- I- I- What? It, I'm supposed to talk to you! He has friends. Okay, he's just running around in circles. All right, fine. Yeah. Oh man, I'm good. Come here, you. Oh, it looks like I have friends as well. Where's this last guy? There he is. Oh, well done. Nice finish, sir. Thank you for your friends. Was that it? Okay, that was it! Hooray! Well, at least that one didn't take very long. Oh, yeah! When you complete the Helix Rifts, um, I think for each one, there's six, I believe. And each time you finish one, you can get up to three per mission. And it's Assassin and Templar Intel from modern day, and it's really cool. And I think I got some new ones. I've read most of them. This is when Melanie was promoted. Abstergo Entertainment Helix Team Virtual Entertainment Exposition Press Training. Where? Los Angeles, California. Aurora Center downtown. Oh! I know where that is! It was close to where- well, not close. About an hour away, but yeah. Key messages. Helix is not virtual reality. It is a virtual experience of actual history. History is your playground. Helix is built on Animus technology, Abstergo's proprietary genetic memory extraction hardware. Helix is safe and comfortable. <laughs> effect. Do's and don'ts. Do use words and phrases like innovative, immersive, total immersion, virtual experience, true history, and the final frontier of pure entertainment. Elaborate on your flagship virtual experience, the tragedy of Jacques de Molay, 14th century France, Last of the Knights Templar, action, suspense, and adventure. Yeah, that was from the beginning of the campaign, but you guys know that if you watched a, a playthrough, played the game yourself, whatever. Tease our forthcoming features without naming names. <gasps> oh, something like our forthcoming virtual experiences will explore all sides of history, good and evil, and all the shades in between. Expound on the core virtues of Helix, history, truth, immersion, fun! 
god! Talk up the Helix Core team. Inspired, hardworking, experienced, 343 collective years of industry experience. Huh? Talk up exter- <laughs> Let me start that one over. Talk up ex- <laughs> Talk up Abstergo Entertainment. The best and the brightest. A studio full of talent. The most t talented? Oh my god. And creative minds on earth. <laughs> Do not dignify any rumors about the disappearance of past Abstergo employees. I <laughs> didn't help with any kind of response. <laughs> Olivier Garneau. Do not mention data tracking, cortex monitoring, <gasps> fMRI omega technology, hippocampal shock, occipital ghosting, brain death, server bridges, rogue programs, or erudito. <gasps> These are industry terms that will only raise false alarms in the minds of muckraking entertainment bloggers from San Francisco. The last thing we need is a 60-point hyperventilating headline on the front page of some squawking tech blog proclaiming, Abstergo Entertainment is trying to kill you! Never speak badly of past projects. Spin negatives into positives. Example, if they say the film Devils of the Caribbean was a frightful mess of cliches, dime store moralizing, and pandering stereotypes, who thought this bucket of bilge water was a good idea? You say... Certainly, we realized very early in the production that Devils of the Caribbean would not be the ideal experience for everyone. What is? But those who want a fun, exciting, and lighthearted look at the Golden Age of Piracy, their ship has come to port. <laughs> Do not confirm cooperative virtual experiences. You may say this is technology we have definitely considered and are looking into it as we speak. We will be unveiling this feature at a later date. Could that be a hint that co-op's coming in a later game? AKA Victory? That could be exciting. I mean, we have co-op in this game, obviously. But this isn't an Abstergo Entertainment product. This is the assassins hacking into what the what Abstergo is trying to do and trying to beat them to Germain before they got there. So this isn't a, an Abstergo Entertainment product. It's not at all. So a cooperative virtual experience that is an Abstergo Entertainment product, I'm betting that's hinting to a later game. We're going to get more co-op, so that's exciting. There's a murder mystery not too far. So you know what? Let's go ahead and do a murder mystery. The death of Philibert Asper in the Paris catacombs. That's why I wanted to do this. A murder mystery in the catacombs! How exciting! Alright, you wanna fight? What I thought! Kinda wish I had the lantern in actual Paris, but then again, there wouldn't be very much opportunity to use it. Then again, after I cleared out the underground of Franz Yard, I have, like, no reason to use it. Philibert Asper. He looks like he didn't die in a nice way. Is his neck snapped? It looks like his face in the wrong way. By the way, this is a tough one. Oh, that's not a data space. I got fed. Pfft, never mind. A well worn Bible. It is covered in blood and stamped by a local convent. The Couvent des Filles de l'Enfance Jesus. <laughs> oh my god, I might as well just shoot myself in the head. 84 Rue de Sèvres. Okay, Sèvres. Mm. Fuck, I have no idea. Can I investigate the body by any chance? I can, okay, let's see what this has to say. I hate you. A few scattered beads in the dirt look to be made of rosewood. Like a necklace that a priest would- okay. My little dog, you can probably hear him yelping in the background. Yeah, he's a retard. Excuse me, I will be right back. Stella! Come here, my girl. Come here, what? Ooh, this is not the stupid one. This is the smart one. This is the puppy who's very quickly not becoming a puppy anymore because she's so big. You're such a big girl. <laughs> Stella. <laughs> ah! All right. <clears throat> Back to seriousness. We're solving a murder here. So don't priests wear a special type of necklace? I think it's got beads on it. I don't know. I'm thinking. There's six clues. Six clues in this tiny little space. A set of keys hooked onto a key ring. Okay. Uh, what about over here? A crate of chartreuse. A crate filled with shattered bottles of chartreuse and surrounded by dirt. <laughs> Let's just say it's wine or something. It looks to have been buried for several years. The address of a local tavern is carved on the side. Five Rue de Sève. Maybe the barkeep could point me to who the owner is. Very astute, Arno. A French liquor that has been made by Carthusian monks in 1737. The drink is made to the specific- Shit. 
The specifications of a secret manuscript it is named after the Grand Chartreuse Monastery. It is one of only a few liquors that will improve with age. Ah, interesting. A heavily used shovel with a very dull blade. The shaft bears the maker's mark and is cracked down the middle. It has been... Excuse me. It has been reinforced with cloth. Someone has kept the shovel for a long time. First aid kit. Your address to the local apothecary is stitched inside. 99 Avenue de Bret... Not even gonna bother. I'm not even gonna bother. I'm gonna offend so many French people out there. Okay. And now I believe apothecary stand and then... The... The... The, the, the monastery, probably. Let's head to the convent next. Oh, I can't see. Right, there we go. Wait, which way did I... Here. Let's just retrace our steps to get out of here. Hello, sir. Four clues. Including you, sister. Carthusian nun of the convent. Convent... The feed... Oh, not even... Yes, just the, the convent. We hand out so many of these to those in need of God's embrace. And that's the blood of Christ, my son. Do you feel his call? The chartreuse. Oh, okay, the wine. That's none of your business. Best you move along. Idle hands. Okay, so she's not very helpful. Statement of the nun. Sister Sorel. Piercing eyes and little patience. She admits the Bible I found next to Philibert belongs to the... Couvent des filles de la France, Jesus. <laughs> Though they give them out for free. She certainly does not like me asking about the chartreuse. Oh, graveyard. Fabulous. There's a level I'm looking for here. Oh, they're all right here next to her. Hmm. A glass containing dark red liquid, according to the sister. It's the blood of Christ. It's wine. Probably the chartreuse. I don't want to speak with you. I want to look at the wine. Fuck. Okay, there we go. I mean, pardon my language. House of the Lord. The bottles are covered in a light film of dirt, just like the ones downstairs. Okay, and then there was one more stack of books over here. Not you! Okay, a large stack of Bibles. The inset bears the same stamp as the Bible from the crime scene. Okay, so obviously he's a monk of this convent. Figured that from when I saw the beads. But basically, I didn't really learn anything new here, except now I can go to the graveyard, which is the sixth location. Uh... That's catacombs. I've already been in there. You know what? Well, we're close. Fuck it. Let's just go to the graveyard. How many clues we got here? Five. Good lord, there's a lot of clues here. Hey, you. Oh, I assume this is where the shovel came from. Noel Palmier, a grave digger. This graveyard's oh. been too busy for my liking. I've got missing tools, and someone even broke into the catacombs. Found a pretty rosewood cross down there, though. Thought I'd give it to the convent. There you go. Statement of the grave digger. Noel Palmier seems a little off. <laughs> Claims he's missing some tools and that someone recently broke into the catacombs. Says he found a rosewood cross that matches the beads found next to Philibert. Strong chance the shovel is his. You know, that's one thing. Did I investigate the body? I must have. I, well, I, I don't know. Because it didn't say how he died. Was he beaten to death with a shovel? Maybe. Was he strangled with his own necklace? That's why it was broken? Yeah, it doesn't tell me how he died. That's really weird and suspicious. You think that's the first thing? It's like, okay, well, first off, what actually killed the guy? Doesn't tell me? That's kind of disconcerting. Whoa. A brand new shovel. It's barely been used. A little odd, considering its owner is a gravedigger. Well, the old one is downstairs next to a dead guy. A casket. I saw it underground. What is this? A French flag. Oh no, small wooden cross. Where the fuck is that? I don't even see it. A wooden cross looks to be made of the same rosewood as the beads at the crime scene. Well, he said he found it and brought it up, maybe. Thought he'd give it to the convent. Or did you? Let's go ahead and read this. Another stamped Bible. I'm not surprised he's a man of faith. Well, yeah, he works with the dead for a living. Can I interact with this? There we go. Half-buried coffin. A freshly built coffin. For the bear would easily fit inside. Anyone would easily fit inside. I would easily fit inside. I suppose I'll keep all that in mind. So we visited the convent, the catacombs, and the graveyard. Let's head to the apothecary stand. Alright. Hello, sir. All I have to do is talk to you. 
I sent him to retrieve supplies from the merchant days ago, and he's not returned. You'd have to ask Philly Bear where the hell Philly Bear has gone. I'll write down the address, but first, I'll take my keys. Oh, those are his keys. Okay. Statement of the Apothecary. Adrian Pitt. Oh, he was his boss. Philly Bear assist assisted an apothecary named Adrian Piet a few days ago who sent him to a local merchant at 9 Avenue de Saxe. Piet does not seem happy with the late delivery. Well, of course not. It's bad business. Here's the tavern right across the street. Hola, senor. Sure. Philly Bear was here last night. Jerome told Bear. Bastard off. That dumb drunk owes me plenty of coin. Promised he'd pay with enough shekel to last me a year. I was dumb enough to believe him. You're Check stealing it from the church. They might know more. <laughs> okay. Always oh, read the evidence. Jerome Tolbert, Philibert was a drunk and was cut off by the bartender last night. He's in plenty of debt and with no shortage of enemies. Philibert promised to pay the bartender off with Chatru to clear his tab. I can't say that word. An odd method of payment. Hmm. Hello, ma'am. Catherine Doyer. Customer. Yes, Philly Bear was here. Bought us a few rounds. He kept going on and on about his sister. I thought he was an orphan, but who knows? Interesting. She says Philly Bear bought a few rounds for everyone in the bar last night. Claims he was going on about his sister, even though she thought he was an orphan. Interesting. I will keep that in mind. Six clues? Jesus criminy Cat! What do you know? I don't want to look... Use Eagle Vision just yet. I'm going to look around and see what I can find. Here we go. That looks familiar. Various wines and spirits. Well stocked. Okay. Oh, you! You look perfectly sober and your sleeve is going nuts. Billy Bear. I love that fool. Oh, he's the happy <laughs> drunk type. Good. Might remember. Maybe. Well, he's not being great. Antoine Dany. This drunk is pretty much useless, an expert at rambling. <laughs> okay. Why is that a clue if it does nothing? It probably does something. I'm just not meant to be made aware of it yet. Oh, you. Walked right by you. Can't say I talked to him. Mom usually keeps me busy enough. Okay, well, you're also useless. Nice. Navar Cavalry. The loot player seems more concerned with playing for no one in particular than sharing information on the Philly Bear. What's all this useless shit I'm getting here? What is the point? Why does well just not give me anything? Oh, it's another bottle. Out of the way. A few bottles of chartreuse. They emit a faint green glow. What? Is that because of the green glass in the bottle, or what the fuck? Six more clues to the merchant stall. Let's go ahead and go. In whatever direction it's in. Over there. I'm probably going to be wrongfully accusing someone. Right now, the grave digger had access to the murder weapon. Alright, let's see. Variety of tonics, tools, and supplies. A very well stocked merchant. Just like the other guy. Merchant stall owner, probably. Billy Bear? Haven't seen him. Well, what do you have there? Chartreuse. Quite rare. You know, the Carthusian monks are famous for making it. I know. And the Carthusian nuns are just as famous for hoiding it as well. Well, I figured as much from the way the nun was talking to me. It seems Philibert never reached the merchant. What is interesting is Pinard's curiosity for the chartreuse I found in the catacombs. It seems the Carthusian monks make it, and the Carthusian nuns of the Couvent des Filles de l'Enfant Jésus <laughs> are notorious for hiding it. Give me the shovel! Okay. These shovels look brand new, unused. They bear the same maker's mark as the one found at the crime scene. Okay, so this guy and the Gravedigger both had access to things that are like the murder weapon, and now suddenly, both shovels they have are unused. Alright, I guess it's time to review the evidence. So let's go ahead and do that. Hey! 84 rude to save. Woo!
so Noel and Sister Sorel are my two top suspects here because a gravedigger has very frequent use of a shovel, yet the one he has upstairs with him, with a half-buried coffin, is brand new. And the one down next to the body is split and broken, meaning it was probably used to kill him at the same time. So, because, I mean, it's so annoying that we don't know how he died. Was he bludgeoned over the head with the shovel? Was he strangled with his own necklace? I don't know. That's my, and plus it says that there was a blood-soaked Bible next to the body. And the nun says they give them out for free. So the gravedigger, who is a man of faith, as it says, probably left his Bible down there and got a new one because the old one was covered in blood. Very suspicious. So I'm, th those are my, that's my theory on the gravedigger. And also the nun is very, is very protective. All the nuns are very protective over the chartreuse, the wine. And uh, the blood of Christ, anyway. If Philibert was stealing the wine from the convent to pay off debts with a tavern owner just down the street, she'd be pissed. I mean, at least the nun, Sister Sorel, at least she has a motive. She's protecting the blood of Christ, which is a very holy thing in the convent. The gravedigger, he doesn't have a motive. He has access to the murder weapon. But I mean, technically the nun had, had access to the murder weapon too. I mean, the, gra the graveyard was right back there. She could have easily taken it. So you know what? I'm leaning towards the nun. I want to talk to the gravedigger again before I accuse anyone. Oops. I'm going to go back and talk to the gravedigger. Because he said something about giving a cross to the convent or something. I got missing tools and someone even broke into the catacombs. Found a pretty rosewood cross down there though. Thought I'd give it to the convent. So someone, according to him, he could be lying, someone broke in and stole tools. It could be the nun. And the rosewood cross could be hers. Because if he has rosewood beads, why would he need a rosewood cross as well? Unless he's like extraordinarily holy. Which I don't think he is because he's a drunk. I'm thinking it's you. I'm... Ah! It's like, I think it's her, but I also know I'm going to be wrong at the same time. But I reviewed the evidence and this is what I came up with. This is where my instinct is taking me. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to go with it. I think it's you. The Lord bestowed this chartreuse to us for good reason. I would never allow a peasant to tarnish its name. Yes! Oh yes! My gut is the best! Woo! Oh, that's exciting! I did it on my first try. I followed my gut, and it paid off. Yeah, the grave digger was, uh, was suspicious, definitely, but he didn't really have a motive. Must I be made to suffer for being guided by the hand of the Lord? Yeah, sure. Jesus made you do it. Jesus, by the way. I fucking love these things. Hello, Mr. Laparon. Wake the fuck up. I'm sure Philibert had noble intentions, but even I know not to touch that chartreuse. You find chartreuse. a weapon you like, it's yours. All right, thank you very much. No false accusations! <laughs> so, I'm so proud of myself. It's a tough one, isn't it? Flamberge. I've never actually gone up to talk to V-Doc. I've never done that before. Shady characters mixed up in this one, eh? Shut the fuck up. Philibert Asper was in over his head with debt. He had spent all his earnings gambling and building up a tab at the local tavern. One night, in a drunken haze, he wandered straight into the Paris catacombs. He was lucky enough to stumble upon a large stash of precious chartreuse. The chartreuse was made by Carthusian monks and said to be hidden by the nuns of the convent, Couvent des Filles de l'Enfance Jesus. <laughs> Seeing an easy way to clear his debts, Philibert attempted to steal as much chartreuse as he could carry. Oh, so that's where the nuns hid it. Okay, gotcha. He had not accounted for the fact that Sister Sorel, who was charged with hiding the cherished elixir, wouldn't take too kindly to thievery. She kept a watchful eye of the catacombs. She also politely gave Philibert a warning that he ignored. When Philibert once again returned for more chartreuse, she, he was met with a shovel to the head. Just like I thought. Sister Sorel ensured Philibert would remain in the catacombs for the rest of his days. The legend goes, ooh, legend, that in 1793, Philibert Asper entered the Paris catacombs in an attempt to map them. He never came out. His body was supposedly found 11 years later, though his existence has never been officially confirmed. Whoa, wait a minute. That means we are way in the future in this murder mystery, because I believe the last campaign mission was 1794. 
And if this guy disappeared in 1793 and wasn't found until 11 years later, that means we're in the early 19th century. So th this murder mystery takes place in 1804? Damn, that's awesome! All that remains is a tomb in the Paris catacombs that says, In the memory of Philibert Asper, lost in this quarry on November 3rd, 1793. Found 11 years later and buried it at the same place, April 30th, 1804. Ha <laughs> ha! 